Hello folks, this is Harley Tuck with MI Squared and I'd like to show you a basic medical encounter using OpenEMR 6.1. OpenEMR is organized around what is called an encounter where clinicians and non-clinical staff work with providers to deliver health care to a patient. You can think of an encounter as the same as an appointment. Now previous documentation of OpenEMR's workflows show essentially the same thing as we're going over here, but the interface of the EMR and its capabilities have developed significantly since the last documentation in what I think version 4.2. So I think it's time for another showing of what a standard medical encounter looks like. We'll be logging in as the receptionist. I'm using the OpenEMR version 6 development demo with demo data for this video. The encounter I'm showing will only be a basic medical doctor's appointment. It will show none of the modifications that can be made to accommodate any of the healthcare specialties and won't show any billing or medication administration workflows. But several items do need to be ready to go for an out-of-the-box open EMR instance like this public demo to match this video. Please read the companion wiki article to this video for a complete listing of those items. At the end of the video, I'll show the URL of the wiki article. And here we go. All right. The very first step of an encounter could be thought of as when the appointment is made. Here I am logged in as the receptionist and let's say a patient has called in requesting an appointment with their doctor, Donna Lee. The front desk person opens the calendar, which is here on the main menu. Click on the provider's name in the list of providers at the left and locate the desired time and date. Phil wants it at 11 o'clock. Now appointments are made on the patient tab right here. Select the visit category which let's just leave it as an office visit. Search on the patient. Like I said it's Phil. And select their name. Confirm the provider's name from the list of providers. The time shown here should be what you clicked on in the calendar. Now this default duration is configurable in the globals. Set the appointment status. Now if a patient has requested an appointment from the portal, you can use any of these confirmed statuses, the AVM, SMS, email confirmed, to indicate that the staff, the staff has confirmed the appointment. But since that's not what's happening here, I'm just going to leave the status as none for right now. Now in the comment space at the bottom, you put the reason for the appointment. In this case, we're demonstrating the workflow. And then click Save. Okay, and now the receptionist goes on about her other work. When the patient arrives at the front desk, the front desk staff locates the patient's appointments on the doctor's calendar. Here we have Dr. Donnelly's calendar, and here's Phil's appointment. They click on the time to open the appointment dialog, and sets the status at arrived and places the patient in a room and click save. Now this clinic has the global variable set to automatically create an encounter form when the patient is marked as arrived for the appointment. 
Okay, and now the patient is handed off to the next staff. Okay, th the next staff is our clinician who usually operates with the flow board open. But it can be opened if it's not already from the main menu, says flow. Okay. Now, the drop downs along the top of the flow board determine which encounters are being shown. The one on the bottom left may need to select all providers to see the patients for all the providers who've been checked in. Now, Fred can see that a new patient has been placed in room one and sees all this information about the encounter, the visit time, total time in the status, stuff like that. Fred clicks on the patient name to open the patient's record into the current appointments encounter form. The encounter summary form is where healthcare staff opens new data forms here in the clinical menu and collects information like vital signs, soap notes, etc. The clinical forms available here can be added to or modified. See the wiki documentation. Let's say Fred does a soap note on how the patient presents today. I'm just going to do as O A P. Click save. And that soap note is added to the forms that are contained in the encounter summary. He then reopens the flow board, clicks appointment status, and changes the status to, let's say, chart pulled. Now the status that is selected depends strictly on what the clinic decides will occur in an encounter. And again, most of these statuses can be whatever you want, as can the room numbers. So we're going to have Fred change the room number for Phil and put him into the next room. Maybe that is an exam room or something. And then click Save. Now, you notice that the color of the line for the patient's encounter has changed with its new status. And these colors and much more about the statuses can be customized. Now the provider takes over, Donna Lee. A person can get to the encounter form from either the flow board or the calendar. We've seen how to open the encounter from the flow board, so if they're looking at the calendar, they click on the patient name to open their record, and then up here on the Select Encounter drop-down, they select the encounter for today's visit here at the top. Okay, and here's the encounter summary again. Now from here the provider opens the clinical forms for the exams or whatever else is to be done and then when all those procedures are complete clicks on the administrative menu and opens the fee sheet. The fee sheet can be used as it comes uncustomized in a new OpenEMR installation but you'll have to do a lot of manual data entry with some fairly simple configuration, it becomes much easier to use. See the wiki. Now the first thing on this fee sheet is, if the clinic has different price levels, select the right one for this patient. In this case, there's only one. It's the default standard price le level. And the next is select the treatment codes, or in an unconfigured, uncustomized EMR, it would be the appointment status code. We're going to use an, est an established patient comprehensive appointment and you can see the see the wiki for this and several other enhancements that can be added to the uh, CPT codes. Now in the next section we'll be looking for an ICD-10 diagnosis code to justify all the CPT codes. So we're just going to put in a partial code here and search on all the codes that match that and then select the one we want. And now in the next section of the fee sheet 
you go through all the CPT codes, in this case we've only got one, but in a normal encounter you'd probably have several, and add the modifiers, if any, put a price in here, and again, uh, you m manually enter it, but with a customized uh, fee sheet, you can include the price and the diagnosis codes and stuff in this. Uh, quantity of the, of the service and the justifying code. Now, make sure that the rendering provider is correct. And if there's a supervisor, select the supervisor and then click save and we're done. Now get to the flow board by whatever method you want. We can go flow board and the provider clicks the appointment status and changes it to let's say coding done for example and changes the room number. Um, this room 3 could in fact be front desk or checkout for example. And now the provider is done with his patient. And finally, the patient comes to the front desk to check out. The accountant, Ernie, or any other staff role that has access permissions that lets them see the fee menu item, and this too is discussed in the wiki, opens their patient record, clicks on the patient name, and that's all you need to do is open the record. Now on the main menu, click the fees. And we have in fact two menu items that can be used to collect payments. Though each is best for different things. The payment is intended for partial payment on the patient's account balance. And checkout is for paying the fee for this appointment in full. So for this demo, we'll simply have him pay the full fee. Click the checkout. Now you'll find that some of the code descriptions here are missing and they can ma be manually added. And in some browsers, the text area alignment is kind of awkward here, like the labels don't line up with the text areas. But en enter any discounts that may be applied. Select the payment method. If there's, if it's by check, a uh, check number will be required. Enter the amount paid, which we've got $123 right here. And then click save. And this is the receipt. You can click print. And print it. I'm just going to cancel it. And yes, the receipt and the invoices are customizable. Let's open the flow board. Find this patient's line here. Status type. Change this to checked out so that the system knows they are no longer in the clinic. And let's clear the room number. Click save. And that's it. Now, be sure to visit the wiki. The easiest way to get to the page for this video is to surf to www.open-emr.org slash wiki. At the bottom of that page, search on Generic Medical Encounter. Open that link to the page and all this stuff is in there with the, the links to the reference materials that I mentioned. Thanks for watching this quick demo of the basic standard medical encounter using OpenEMR version 6.1.